Welcome back to the Denny Cycles YouTube channel. Today we're going to do a disassembly and reassembly of a round bing 15mm carburetor. And this will be the same for the 12 and 14mm round bings as well. To do this, you're going to need a screwdriver, both flathead and Phillips head, a pair of pliers, an 8mm wrench, and finally a 10mm wrench. So there's not a lot of tools you need to do this. We're going to start this process by removing the bowl. Generally, these are loose and can be removed by hand, but occasionally you will need a wrench to do this. Now, moving on from this, we're going to remove the float bowl gasket. And you can use a little screwdriver, pair of pliers, just something to get a grip on it, pull it up out of there. As you can see, we use the pliers here. And just remove that, get that out of the way. And then we'll get started on removing the float. You just want to push the pin out with a little screwdriver, get a little bit of that end exposed. Then kind of grab on hold of it with some pliers. Make sure you get a good grip. And then it'll just pull right on out of there. Now that that's pulled out of there, you can remove the float, the float needle. It just pulls right out. Uh, the float needle kind of fell off there. That piece here is the float needle, and then this part is called the float, and then that is the float pin. Next, we'll move on removing the atomizer, and in this video, we're going to remove the atomizer and the main jet together, just because that's the way they come out. So when we unscrew the main jet, it is screwed into the atomizer, and they just all came out as one. You can see that part there's the atomizer and the part on the end is the main jet. Now we're going to remove the top cap. We will start by removing the cable adjuster on the top and it will just unscrew out of there. If you do need a wrench, this is where you use the eight millimeter wrench and it will just screw right, right out of there. And then we can set that aside. You can also leave this installed, but a lot of times it'll have a 90 degree and it's just easier to get out of the way. So next we're going to unscrew this top cap and this, there's two screws on the top. They're going to be Phillips head and you'll notice here in the video, I keep my finger on the top cap once I get both, both screws started because there's going to be some pressure on it from the spring. A spring's going to be pushing up at it. So you want to hold that top cap down and I'll, sh I'll show you here what, what I'm talking about. See how it has that spring that just kind of pushes it up. So you want to hold it down until you get both of the screws fully out. And right now we're just working on unscrewing them the rest of the way. And then we'll pull this whole top assembly off. And it usually will all pull out just as one unit, just like that. Sometimes the slide will stay in there, but a lot of times it'll, it'll come out. So right here, that's going to be your slide spring. And then moving on from that, that's going to be the top gasket. That's right there. Next, we're going to have the choke slide. That's this part right here. And then finally, this part is called the top cap. And we're just going to remove the screws out of there. So that'll be the top cap and the top cap screws. And it also has, you can remove the choke. That's what that is right there. It just slides up and down. That's removable, but we're going to leave it in for now. Next, we're going to remove the slide. And the start on the top will be the idle slide clip, but we're just going to take it all out at one piece. And we'll go to, into a little bit more detail when we reassemble here in a minute. So the first thing we pull, popped out right there is called the idle slide top clip. And then this next part, this is going to be called the needle in the clip. And it's adjustable, so you can move that clip to different positions on the needle. Yeah, I had tried to show you guys a little bit, but the camera wasn't uh, zooming, focusing in very well. And then finally, this is just going to be the throttle slide. And now we're going to move on to the banjo removal. And this is where the fuel inlet into the carburetor. So for this, you're going to need the 10 millimeter wrench. And what you do is you just unscrew this, and it'll have one, one washer gasket on the end. 
Okay, and so this red gas will be called the fuel inlet banjo gasket. And then obviously this metal part will be the fuel inlet banjo. Now we are going to move on to the idle screw removal. And this is a pretty easy part. You just need a flathead screwdriver and it'll just unscrew right out of there. There will be one spring on it, but there's usually not much tension on it where you have to worry about it pushing itself back off of there. You see it just comes right out. There has a little point at the end. So that screw is called the idle screw. And then this little spring will be called the idle screw spring. And if you need any of these parts, you can find them all www.dennycycles.com, all ind individually and as kits. So now you can see the body is pretty bare. Most of the stuff's been removed off of it. This and finally, this is the bolt that used the clamp onto the intake. Now we're going to get to reassembly. And for this, we're going to start with the slide first. And if you notice, there's that little groove in it and that little pin on the inside of the carburetor body itself. And that's what that slide will go on to. So it goes on like this, and then you put the needle and clip will go straight down. And you want to make sure you get it lined up. We, we did that in a minute off camera. And then that top clip just goes right on top. And again, that top clip is called the idle slide top clip if you do need it. Now we're going to move on to installing the spring. And to start with this, we're going to put that choke slide on, push the choke all the way down, put the choke slide on, put that top gasket in up to the top. We're going to start by putting the spring there in the carburetor. And now that we have that top piece all complete, we'll slide that in. You notice the way that choke slide goes in. That's the way you want yours to go in. The little round shape will face the front. And then you just want to hold that down until you get the screws in as it is spring loaded here. So we're just going to get the springs, or we got the spring compressed, we're just going to get these screws screwed in here. So we're just going to screw, 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 get those in there. And once we get those tightened up, we'll put the cable adjuster back on and some throttle cables will have the cable adjuster already on it. Some will be angled, some will be straight. Um, it really just depends on what you have. Right here we just have a straight one. But you just screw that down to where you need it. Then once you get it snug, eight millimeter wrench to tighten that down. Now that's tightened. Top part's good to go. We're gonna start on the bottom. So for here, we're going to start reinstalling the idle screw. This is a fairly easy thing to do. The spring just slides on the screw, and then it just screws in right here. And you can adjust this once you get it on the bike to determine how you need your idle to be set. And that black button to the left, that is called the bing button. So if you press that, it will fill the float bowl with gas. So if you run out of gas, it's a pretty handy little little trick to do. And now we're going to install, reinstall the fuel inlet. Just have the fuel inlet banjo on there, gasket, and we'll just screw that in. And for this you're going to need the 10 millimeter wrench. So you just want to get that snug. And again that's going to be the 10 millimeter wrench. Now we're going to show you how to change the main jet. This came out as all one piece but all you have to do is take a pair of pliers to hold the atomizer, and then you're going to take a flathead screwdriver to unscrew that main jet on out of there. As you can see we're doing here, it comes out of there pretty easily, and then it just unscrews right out of there. So that part in, in our hand now is called the atomizer, and the little part is called the main jet. So we're just going to screw these back together. Hold on to it with the pliers again and tighten that main jet back in there. You can install the atomizer by itself and then put the main jet in after, but we just don't have the small enough socket available 
at the moment. So we're just going to put it back in the way that uh, we took it out. But again, ideally you should install the atomizer separately and then the main jet after. Because you, what you want to be able to do is replace the main jet without the atomizer pulling out every time. But there you can see we got it back in there and now we're going to get started on the rest of this. So our next step here is going to be to install the float. So what you want to do now is take this float needle and slide it in the little groove on the float. And you have to be pretty careful here, make sure this holds in place while you drop it down. The float needle, the tip will go right down into that brass part. As you can see here, just slide it in, everything lined up. Now we'll take the float pin and slide it in the groove here. Sometimes this takes a minute to line up, it doesn't always get in there the first time. But there you go, we got it, got it lined up, pushed in pretty easily. And then you can just take the pliers to adjust it if you need. A lot of times on the used carburetors, you might need some of the pliers to get it, get it in there. But now that we got that adjusted, we will move on to installing the float bowl gasket. And there will be a groove on the inside that this will sit in, so it's fairly easy to, to get in there. So just install that float bowl gasket, and then the float bowl itself will just screw right back on. You just got to make sure you get it lined up and once it's lined up it will thread right on there and now the carburetor is completely rebuilt reassembled and ready to go and again if you need any parts all these parts are available individually at www.dennycycles.com and i will also include a link below to that as well if you guys have any questions comments concerns let us know and again this will work for any of the round bin carburetors for poop mopeds